In this video, we are going to introduce you to the world of materials inside of Unreal Engine 3. Materials are one of the key factors that will give your levels that quintessential Unreal Engine 3 high-resolution look. But basically, what is a material? Oh, you say basically. Well, basically, a material is nothing more than the paint that you're going to take and apply to surfaces inside your level, be it to BSP, static meshes. It could be even to effects that are generated through particles or... Those well, processes exactly. that appear across your screen. All sorts of places these things turn up. But defining a material as paint is really just the starting point for what a material is. A material is a set of instructions. It can be simple. It could be a series of complex instructions that's defining a color in the end mm -hmm. that is going to interact with light and be seen by the players that are playing the game. Just looking around right now on this level that Zach has loaded up, you can see materials may look like shiny objects. It may look like grungy, kind of nasty, dirty type metal. We've even got this uh, uh, LRC lit up right now. It appears to be illuminating light. That's right, which it's not. It's just a material effect. And to go a step further, just looking at the level right now, it looks like we have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of polygons, when in essence, that's not the case. It's through the illusion of bump maps and normal maps that we see this effect of geometry all over the place, when in essence, we're actually looking at a relatively simple scene right now, as far as geometry goes. But it is the materials that are giving us this high-resolution effect. That's right. Actually, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Like, maybe up here on the doorway, we got these nice, you know, divots kind of carved in. On our sign, we have these this slat work here in the background. Even the lights themselves kind of look like they're raised out from the surface. But if we hide the materials away, we'll see that it's just a flat surface. <laughs> just flat surfaces all over the place. Yeah, in fact, almost all of our detail completely disappears, and we end up with this sort of flat plastic look. And as soon as we turn our materials back on and go over into lit mode, suddenly we get all of our rich detail back. The whole world comes to life because, you know, when you're standing in an environment like this, you know, there is a lot going on. I mean, right. there would be a lot of geometry if you were to model all of this out to give you the effect that you're seeing right now. But fortunately, materials are powerful enough that we can go in there and we can define where all of these bumps and raised areas are going to be and we can fake that geometry. That's right. And as you progress through the next few videos, we're going to show you how you can control these factors kind of in an introductory fashion. We're going to get you started in the world of creating your own materials. That's right. But first, we need to talk about some simpler things like where do you find materials in the first place? I like to call it the big picture. Where do we find them? How do we drop it on a surface? How do we get back to it? How do we create a new one? Let's start with those things. Let's look at that now. All right, let's begin with where to find materials. All of your materials can be found inside the generic browser, which I'm going to open with the generic bra uh, open generic browser window button up here <laughs> in my toolbar. That's not confusing at all. I keep wanting to read the tool tips. I can't help it. So we'll click on that button, and the generic browser appears. Now, to get a material into uh, this, we need to open up a package that contains some materials. Now, you'll be happy to know that Unreal Tournament 3 ships with tons of materials already created. Many different materials. And I'm glad you mentioned that because it's a really important thing as you get uh, more and more experience with creating materials. It's very handy to be able to open up a material that Epic has put together, see how they did it, and learn new tricks. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'll probably be reminding you of that several times as you go through these videos. But let's go ahead and go to File, Open. And I'm going to grab ASC Walls Stone and click Open. Now, when you first bring this in, you might notice that some of these materials look kind of boring, kind of bland, or, or blurry, I guess would be the good word. Yeah, blurry is a good word. If you click someplace in the generic browser, those will sharpen back up. It's just a refresh thing, so no worries there. So what I'm going to do is show you, uh, well, the materials in general. Here they are. These are materials. You can select them. You see some information about them, like this material here has 62 instructions and three different textures. What are these instructions? Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we progress. But now that you know where the materials are, let's take a look at how you can apply them to surfaces in your level. Now, we're going to be picking mainly on BSP surfaces. You can apply these to uh, actual uh, what am I static, static meshes, meshes. Or geometry. and I'll be showing you that a little bit later. For now, let's just stick simply to BSP. And fortunately, I have a big BSP wall available right here in my level. 
So all I'm going to do is select that wall so it turns blue, and then it's as simple as clicking on one of your materials. So we'll just click on this rock material we have here, and immediately you see a change. So now this wall looks like it's made out of rocks. It looks a little funny there because it ends. We could click over here and apply it to this one too. And there you go. We have a material applied. Now, there are some shortcuts to doing this, and I'm just kind of throwing this in kind of as an, as an added feature to the video. If you hold down the Alt key, you can right-click on any surface, and that copies an existing material off BSP. You can Alt-Left-Click and reapply it someplace else. So, you know, we can right Alt-Right-Click here, Alt-Left-Click here, and we can put that um, rock mesh or that rock uh, material right back on our surface. So now that we've seen where we can pull some materials in that are already created, these are done. That's right. But what actually constitutes the creation of this material? Well, to see that, we must go into the material editor. Ooh. Yes, there's an entire material creation system inside of Unreal. And uh, as we start to dig into it, you're going to find that while it is pretty technical, and while uh, at first it may seem really daunting, it allows non-programmers, it allows artists to go in and create highly complex materials in a straightforward and very easy visual kind of way. That's right. Now let's start off by creating our own first material. I'm going to right-click on a blank spot here inside my generic browser, and we'll come down to new material. I'll left-click on that, and we get the new window, which pops up whenever you create any new thing here inside the generic browser. I'll create a new package. We'll call this... Zach's materials. Yeah, we're not interested in putting our own materials inside of packages that are already put together for the game. No, I would, I would definitely advise against changing any packages that ship with the game, just in case. Now, uh, let's go down. I'm not going to put this into a group, but if you want it, oh, okay, a material fine. group. We'll put it materials. into a material group, or materials, there we go. And uh, we'll give it a name. We'll call this uh, First Material. And it's going to be very basic. I'm just letting you know that now. And this is just something that I like in general. When I'm creating materials, I will say Matt underscore so that I can look at a names list and know immediately that I'm talking to a material. But, uh, of course, you have, if you have a different convention, that's fine, too. Now, a big, new, scary window pops up. Yeah, basically, Unreal Engine, or the Unreal Editor here, knew that you were just creating a new material. So instead of just showing you the final result of that material back in the generic browser, it took you straight into the material editor because it assumes that you're about to start constructing this new material that you just created. That's right. Now, in a later video, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at this interface. For now, we're going to stick very, very simple, and I'll just walk you around the stuff that you need to know. Here you have this big dark area. This is a preview window that is actually showing you what our material looks like. And don't mind the red dots. That's because we have something selected in our <laughs> level. In fact, I think it's the red builder brush, so I can't completely confirm that. But there's a sphere there right there. If you look very carefully, you can see the outline of it. But at the moment, we are not providing this material with any color information, any specular information on how it would act with a light, because there are lights, or there is a light of available right here inside this scene, right. shining on this sphere. But we're not providing any information whatsoever that the rendering engine that is rendering this sphere to us right now can use to show us color. That's right. Think about this as a oh, autosave just kicked in. Think about this as if it were a flat black sphere in a black room. Even if you had the lights on, you wouldn't be able to see it. So let's begin by taking a look at what else we see. Here we have another big window, and this is where all of the magic of your material happens. This is the actual sequence window where we're going to be taking all of our uh, material expressions and connecting them together into networks to form our overall material. Now, let's start simple. Let's start simple. I'm trying to, like, I don't really want to blow anybody's minds. No, nope, let's, let's not. Let's just go ahead and put a simple color on this mm -hmm. and... Call it. <laughs> okay. We'll so keep it easy. What I'm going to do to bring in a color, what is a color? A color is an RGB value. I'm going to bring in a special node, a special material expression here from the material expressions list that is there specifically to hold a color, a constant three vector. So it has three values, one for red, one for blue, and one for green. All I did was just left click and drag that right out of the material expressions window. So here it is, and, well, what color is it storing? Currently, it's storing black, which uh, if we come down to the Properties window, which is underneath everything, and you'll notice this looks a lot like uh, many of the Properties windows available in several other parts of Unreal Ed. We have red equals zero, green equals zero, and, of course, blue equals zero. Let's give this uh, red value of one, and immediately our color swatch, if you will, turns bright, brilliant red. 
Now, what I'm going to do is take uh, my left, uh, le- my, excuse me, my left mouse button. I'm going to drag from this little handle here, and I get this cool little wire. Now, what is this? This is sending information out of the node I just created, and where do I want to plug it in? I'm going to plug it into the diffuse channel on my material node. Again, think of this as the actual brain of your material, and this is going to be all the nodes that make things happen. Right now, we have a very simple material, but as soon as I made that connection, suddenly our material kind of came to life. Mm-hmm. We can drag here and rotate around it. We can see that uh, light is striking it. It's kind of like a, a red piece of rubber. It has no shininess value to it. Uh, but we'll talk more about uh, you know, about that sort of thing a little bit later. In essence, we have a usable material. Yes, we do. There's no reason why you couldn't use this material. So what we need to do now is save the changes we have made to this material. When it first opened up, it had nothing connected to it. It was black on black. And uh, anything we change from here on out needs to be saved. We can save this by clicking on the Apply Changes to Material button up here at the top. It's the first of the three check boxes. Even though they all look alike, you want the one on the far left. We'll click on that. Give it just a moment to save. And then we can close out of the Material Editor. We're actually done with it now. Now, if I scroll down in my uh, Packages list, we'll see Zach's Materials. Let's click on that. Also notice there is an asterisk next to this package. That means something has changed in it, and it needs to be saved. If you don't want to lose those changes, you need to save this package at this point. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you can do that by going under File and just choosing Save. And it's going to ask you, you know, what would you like this to be named? Zach's materials will work. You want to make sure it's not named something that already exists somewhere else. Also, in general, it's a good idea to make sure it doesn't share the same name as some other thing that, is, that may not be a package. Like you might have a static mesh that you've saved in it, or a lot of different things you could uh, have in here, some sort of unreal factor with the same name. Don't do that. This will be Zach's materials.upk. Let's go ahead and click Save. Give that just a second, and this asterisk will go away. There you go. And now we are uh, ready to rock. So now using the techniques we learned earlier, let's just select a wall, and I'll hold down Control and select both the walls at the same time, and we'll just left-click over here on this material, and voila, we have just applied our a red new exciting red coat of paint. That's right. <laughs> now, uh, we can also apply this to static meshes, and this is just a little bit technical, uh, requiring that you not only dig into the properties of a static mesh, but that you kind of add an override property within the static mesh. I'll walk you through it, but if you are creating a material on your own from a static mesh, uh, if it's using any form of texture, don't be surprised if, uh, if it looks a little funny at first, provided you haven't taken the UVs for that mesh into account. Each of these static meshes has a, uh, a UV layout that is all its own, dictating where, the t- where and how the texture will be placed on the surface. If you, uh, like for example, if we tried to make that uh, rock wall material and just apply it here, it's probably going to look really funny, and that's because of the UV layout. Just keep that in mind. All right, so to apply a material to a static mesh, we open up the static mesh actor property, expand static mesh component, and scroll way down underneath the rendering heading, and you're going to see a material section. Now, if you try to expand this, it's not going to have anything in it. You need to add a new item to it. So go ahead and click on the little green plus sign, and you get uh, instance zero or index zero, which uh, currently has no materials in it. What you've just done is you've opened up a channel that allows you to create kind of an override material. It's going to take whatever material was actually assigned to the static mesh when it was created, and it's going to override it with whatever uh, material you stick in here. Now, what we can do is come over here to our magnifying glass button, and all that's going to do is bring up the generic browser, which is important if you happen to have the thing closed. You can just click right here on the uh, Show Generic Browser button, bink, and it appears. Make sure we have our material selected. We can close the generic browser right back up and click on our little green arrow, which is Use Current Selection in Browser, and voila. So now we close our Properties window out of the way, and you can see that our static mesh now has a red coat of paint applied to it. So that's a quick look at applying uh, materials to static meshes. Probably not something you're going to do a whole lot, but some of the uh, static meshes that you create, and uh, perhaps even some that Epic has supplied, will have two different materials. Maybe one that's a little bit more uh, grunged up or damaged, or uh, maybe a material that is for a certain base, like the red base or the blue base, that sort of thing. So it is handy to know how to change those out if you need to. Really, though, with that, we've covered the basics of what I wanted to, uh, to show in this video, which is just an introduction to what materials are, the kind of uh, power that they provide in making your objects look much more realistic, and then just the basics of how to open them up, how to apply them to surfaces, and how to create your own very, very basic material. Now, in upcoming videos, we're going to talk a little bit more about the material editor, about its user interface, about that big material node and a lot of the things you can do with it, and we're going to create a much more 
more sophisticated material that we can apply to our surfaces. So with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.